Hey, how's it going everybody? It's Patches. Welcome back to my channel. We are finishing up March. Today is March 31st, and instead of doing a monthly wrap-up of all the books that I have read, I decided to do a quarterly wrap-up. So I'm going to discuss the books that I read in January, February, and March. Now, in January, February, and March, I read a total of 44 books which is crazy because I wasn't much of a reader until this year. I always had books, I always owned books, but I never made the time to actually read them. And then last December, I actually took a book of the month subscription seriously and I picked up a couple things and wound up absolutely loving them. I wanted to kind of discuss what I had been reading this year and my thoughts so far. If you follow me on Goodreads, if you follow me on Instagram or anything like that, some of this might be a little repetitive. This may be a lengthier video. I'm going to try and keep it short with just a brief summary of each book. Nothing too spoilery, of course, or no spoilers at all, but I am going to be discussing what I read. So the way I kind of keep up with all this is I purchased an iPad and I love it. I keep, it's like a notepad app, and I keep a record of basically all the books that I read, including their star review, which is super cool. The first book that I finished this year in January of 2020 was An American Marriage, and I'm going to scoot over so I can put the, the thing right here because I actually don't own this book anymore. I gave this book three stars. It, it was when I was still trying to figure out what genre I was into, and it was just recommended to me as a possibility of something that I would like, and it was it was okay. What fascinated me about this book was somewhere in the beginning, it's, it's, it's essentially about a, um, a husband and wife, and the man gets accused of raping someone even though he did not do it and his wife can be a witness to that saying no he was with me all night but he still goes to jail and in the beginning they're like writing letters back and forth to each other and i thought that that's what the whole book was going to be kind of like what's the word episcopary episcopal i thought it was going to be like that which would have been fascinating i really wish this whole book would have been just letters going back and forth between them but it wasn't, I wound up giving it three and a half, or yeah, three out of five stars because I just wasn't, I wasn't into how it was becoming. It just went places that I didn't agree with. That's all. I feel like most of this video is going to be me reaching for stuff. I should have gotten the books out and ready, but here we are. So next, I read On the Plane Home um, from North Carolina to California, I read The Bromance Book Club. I gave this five stars. This was fantastic. It was really cute. Not something I would typically be interested in. It is very rom com -y, second chance romance about a professional baseball team who try to impress their wives by reading um, romance novels. It's a quick read. It's hilarious. Um, I am not one to really judge second chance romance type situations. It's not something that bothers me. So this was a very, very fun read. Um, the main character's wife has threatened him with a divorce, basically kicked him out. They have two twin girls, and basically he's just trying to win her back by reading romance novels with his buddies on the pro baseball team. <laughs> it's quite adorable, and I just purchased the sequel. I haven't gotten a chance to read it yet, um, Undercover Bromance. I really like her writing. I think it's really enjoyable and it's something lighter hearted if you need a lighter hearted rom-com but it uh it made me very happy i cannot wait to get into this one but i definitely recommend this one this was five stars so the next book is the chain by adrian mckinty this i gave four stars this book was a roller coaster i really 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 enjoyed it i thought the writing was fantastic it creeped me out it made me not want to go outside for a while, which I can't now, but it was insanely creepy and such a cool concept. And from what I read, it was started as a short story and then somebody told him he should probably make this into a novel. With that being said, the second part of this book, it's written into two sections and the book kind of wraps up in the first section. And then the second section, it kind of has a finale to it, like a grand boss fight if you will <laughs> it was it was just okay the second part was just fine but i give it four stars strictly for that first part it was it's a phenomenal book i really recommend it it's about essentially a game called the chain and it had me singing the chain by what fleetwood mac for like a week essentially you have to kidnap a kid because someone has your kid and then you have to make sure the parent of that kid Okay, so it starts with the person who's kidnapped a kid, and in order to get their kid back, they have to have 
the parent of that child kidnap a kid. Does that make sense? Very twisted. It's very dark. It's very good. I highly recommend this book if you like thrillers, suspenseful stuff, suspenseful reads. It's one of the better ones that I've read. It's really fucking good. <laughs> So next was my book of the month. This was actually my book of the month for November of 2019, but I didn't read it until January of 2020. Ninth House by Leigh Bardugo. I'm not going to go too much into this. I'm actually going to promote a video that I did with my one of my great friends, Emily, from This Buys Bookshelf. Bing! We did a uh, buddy read with this and my friend Michaela, and then we discussed our thoughts on it on her channel. This was a very good book, though. I gave this one four out of five stars. Oh my gosh, okay, this next one was one of my favorites that I've read, and I've debated giving it five stars, but ultimately I gave it four. It's it's um, Such a Fun Age by Kylie Reed. This book was so good. I actually did the audiobook, and I highly suggest the audiobook. I can't remember her name exactly, but it was so well done. She does these not goofy, not intentionally goofy, like, voices for the male actors and stuff like that, but I just thought it was really well done, because she seemed to really get into it, and it was a good performance. I thought some of the parts were kind of cheesy, but essentially it's about a nanny who is black and taking care of a very rich white family's child. And it says a lot just about today's society, and it says a lot about nannying in general and that kind of luxury, I guess, if you will. It's a great, great book. And again, I highly recommend the audiobook. Okay, <laughs> next is The Unhoneymooners by Christina Lauren. This was my first Christina Lauren book. And I gave it three stars. I thought it was kind of weird. I really enjoyed, enjoyed, I really enjoyed the part where some drama really kind of just, not to get too spoilery, but something crazy happens and that was like the best part of the book. Basically someone catches someone else cheating and it's nuts catches someone else cheating and has the girls that he's been talking to come over to the house at the same time and they all just show up and everyone's staring at each other and it was great but essentially it is about a these i think they're twins at least sisters and brothers one of the sisters and one of the brothers gets married and then the other sister and the other brother hate each other the dialogue is very witty it's very enjoyable but ultimately it was just kind of weird because it's like aren't y'all kind of related now I don't know. I've heard very mixed reviews about uh, Christina Lawrence books. I wanted to give this one a shot though, and I don't know if I'm going to be returning to her books anytime soon. We'll see. So I have a story about the next one. A little anecdote, if you will. So the next one I read while I did the audiobook was Still Alice by Lisa Genova. And then this was, <laughs> this was my one star read of the month. I really didn't like this book, mainly because I think think because of the audiobook. The audiobook unfortunately is read by Lisa Genova and it was so dull and so boring and so depressing. I went into it of course knowing that it wasn't going to be this happy rom-com beautiful story of like someone essentially losing their mind but it just was like not read very well and it just didn't put me in a good headspace and that's not to say that like that's a fault on I don't know if there's anyone to fault, but I was attending a book club in January and the head of the book club had us go around the room as like icebreakers answering some questions. The head of the book club asked, what book do you really not like? And I said, still Alice. And after the book club, older woman in the group came up to me and told me that her husband had just died from Alzheimer's. So next I read, or I did the audiobook actually because Kenneth Branagh does the audiobook and it was really good, it was Murder on the Orient Express by Agatha Christie. This is my first Agatha Christie book. I gave this one three stars though. I thought it was kind of weird. I didn't love it. I thought it was an interesting ride and Kenneth Branagh does a really, I think I'm saying his name right, he does a really great job with the, um, something was funny. He does a really good job with all the voices and all the accents and everything like that, so I definitely recommend it for that. But there were some race things said and some other things I wasn't too comfortable with. It was just kind of weird. <sighs> this next one, again, fantastic audiobook, Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller. Oh my god, this book, five stars, so good. The audiobook is so good. It made me so happy. Like the, oh my god, the story just made me so happy. I cried, I laughed, I was... It was amazing. I highly recommend this book. I'm so excited. I have um, Cersei by Madeline Miller that I need to read that I haven't read yet, but I got a copy of it. Need to read it because I love her writing. I love... 
I love Song of Achilles. It's definitely become one of my favorite books of all time and highly recommend. It is a take on Patroclus and um, the other guy and essentially their relationship if it was a relationship and not like they were cousins or whatever, like the suspected things of Greek mythology, if you will. So next was The Sundown Motel, which was my book of the month pick for January by Simone St. James. I give this one three stars. I have an issue sometimes with books that seem like half of it is just like playing catch up with the other character. If you have characters in different points of view and then one of them is figuring things out and then the other characters like also figuring those same things out, it's like, okay, I'm rereading parts it feels like. Essentially it's about, it's creepy, I'll give it that. It's essentially about a motel that this woman used to work at in the 80s, 70s or 80s, and she goes missing. And it's not the first time that someone has gone missing in that area and we're at the motel. And that girl's niece works at the motel present day to figure out what happened to her aunt. It, it is good, but it just wasn't my favorite thriller of all time, I'll say that. Oh, next, another good audiobook was A Sweet Bitter by, what's her name again, Stephanie Dandler. Sweet Bitter was very good. It has a really interesting voice actor doing the audiobook, but I really enjoyed the weirdness of the story and just following this girl in her path of being a waitress in New York. But it's, it's appealing to me and I really had a good time following and I thought it was fine and I gave this one four stars. I really wound up liking this a lot. And the last one that I read for January of 2020 was Washington Black by, I'm going to say her name wrong, so I'm just going to put it up here. I don't want to insult her. I read this for a book club as well. Get this one four stars. It was a fantastic story um, about a, where are they? I can't remember. I think they're in England somewhere. Um, I also don't have, I had it from the library. A lot of these I don't have anymore. Well, a lot of these I've let people borrow and like half of these were audiobooks. It's about a slave who attends to this guy this on a plantation. He attends to this master, but the master's brother kind of takes him in and lets him be more of a person than just a slave. It was very well written and the discussion for the book club was a lot of fun. A lot of the women felt the same way. There was only a few people who really didn't like it. I just had some issues, of course, with but people saying like he finally gave him a life and I was like no but he was still a slave so I gave that one uh four stars and I really want to read her other book I gotta check it out February somehow read 17 books I don't know how but I did and only two of them three of them being audiobooks so the first one for February I read I started in January but I finished it like right at February 1st so I decided that should count towards February Smoke Gets in Your Eyes by Caitlin Dowdy Dodie. It's a memoir about her time working in the crematorium. She is a fantastic writer. She makes it delightful even though it is about death. She makes it not so scary. It's a really fascinating book and I highly recommend it. I have her other book uh, From Here to Eternity. It's like right there somewhere. I need to read it um, and also I need to read Will My Cat Eat My Eyeballs. She just has a really interesting way of making things not as scary. I guess. Just like embracing death in a way that's kind of like an art form, if that doesn't sound too pretentious. But I really did like this memoir. It's one of my favorites. I let my friend borrow it and I hope I get it back because it's signed. I got it from Book Soup. Okay, so next, this one's a hot topic. The next book that I finished in February was Red, White, and Royal Blue by Casey Mc... what is it? McQuinton? McQuist... McQuiston? I only gave this one three stars. It wasn't my thing. I thought it was really sweet. I thought the dialogue was really witty. The political stuff made my eyes just kind of glaze over, but I enjoyed it. But I thought it was fine. I didn't... wasn't obsessed with it like a lot of people are. Essentially a take on if the president of the United States, one is a woman, and two has a son, and is befriending the Queen of England's son, right? I think. They form a relationship. It just wasn't really my thing. I thought it was really sweet though. I thought it was a great idea. Um, I just wasn't about it. I thought it was fine. Hello, editing patches here. I completely left out two books that were on my list of things that I read. And one of them was The Whisper Man by Alex North. I talked a little bit about this in my book outlet haul. I love this book. Gave it four stars. I read it for a book club. And then also The Wives by Taryn Fisher also read it for book club, also four stars. I really enjoyed both of those a lot. Sorry, continue watching. 
So next is again a one star for me and it's actually behind my other book of the month books back here because I really really didn't like this book. I did a uh, book vlog about it. It's The Holdout by Graham Moore which is very shocking. I thought I was going to love this book and I didn't which is sad. <laughs> did a whole book vlog about it. I'll link it down below. Essentially it's about um, a group of jurors. I believe 12 of them. I think that's how typically how many jurors there are. A uh, group of 12 jurors who find this guy not guilty and they're called like the stupidest jurors in America or whatever and they are reunited for a Netflix show and then someone else dies from the juror jury but I just had so many issues with it it I talk about it m mainly in that reading vlog if you want to get more into it so the next I read is uh, The Ruin by Dervla McTiernan very Irish I did the audiobook I gave it three stars though because the beginning was really fascinating and then I just kind of like petered out from there and I just kind of lost interest it's um it's a series though of a cop um, or a detective. Uh, it started off really weird where it was like essentially about a guy who gets a call, a uh, well, wellness, no, 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 he gets a, uh, they get a phone call from a kid, 911 gets a call from a, a kid saying, um, I think something happened to my mom and then they go check it out thinking it's like a domestic thing and turns out that she's dead and then they go to the hospital together. It's two siblings it's an older girl and her younger brother and the older girl just kind of vanishes and then x many years later I don't remember the older brother commits suicide and people are trying to figure out did he actually commit suicide like did she have something to do with it I don't even remember what happened so next is the turn of the key by Ruth Ware you've seen this everywhere it's probably one of the best thriller th thrillers of all time i gave it five stars but i also gave it five stars because of the audiobook i know people have said that the audiobook is one of the best audiobooks ever but i agree it really is it's a fantastic audiobook she does a great performance she does like all of the onomatopoeias she cries when she needs to it's really a fascinating performance the book itself though is just one of the best thrillers ever like it's so good it's it's I'm trying not to put it on my top 10 because I feel like it's on everyone's top 10 and it's kind of old news I feel but I'm not trying to think about that right now it's a fantastic book though I really really enjoy this and I really recommend it essentially it's about a woman a nanny who is in prison she was just recently incarcerated and she's reaching out to a lawyer to do two things not only represent her in a new trial but also believe her that one of the children under her care did not die because of her. She's just trying to make prove herself to this lawyer and the beginning of it are just like these really short pages of her like making drafts of the letter and then it gets to lengthier stuff where she's talking about what happened and it's just it's so good it's I mean it lives up to the hype for sure it's one of the best books I've ever read. I do have a couple other Ruth Ware books I'm going to try and read this year. I have Woman in Cabin 10 and The Death of Mrs. Westaway, but I heard that this one is by far the best, but we shall see. I'm excited to check out the others. So next is another hot take, Pretty Girls by Karen Slaughter. I gave this one two stars. If you want to see uh, our discussion, we also read this for the Backlist Book Club with Emily from This Bye Bookshelf. I will link that video down below. I really didn't like this book. It just wasn't for me. It had its moments, but it just wasn't my kind of thing. It just wasn't enjoyable. I really don't like a lot of the aspects and tropes that were in this, such as fake deaths. Um, just that's the biggest one, I think, but not for me. So the next is The Family Upstairs by Lisa Jewell. I don't have this one either. I returned it. This one I gave three stars. It was fine. I liked how it started. I liked the concept of it, but ultimately it just kind of fell flat and I really didn't like the ending. It just kind of pittered out for me. Essentially about a woman who uh, is orphaned and she gets a letter telling her that she is now the owner of the big house that she grew up in but was only like a couple months old when her family were basically in what looked to be a suicide pact and some cult stuff is involved and it's again a really cool concept but that was more exciting than the actual book it was okay it was all right so next one of the best books that i've read this year definitely most likely going to be on my top 10 is ask again yes by mary beth, mary beth keen this was so good. I did not think I was going to like this as much. I honestly picked it up because I had seen it so many times on booktube and people or just Instagram like I had just seen it before so I grabbed it at the library. I really want my own copy because this is such a good book. It's about a suburban lifestyle of these two cops. 
I think they're in like Philadelphia, but they're, it's these two cops and they move in kind of next to each other and their kids, a boy and a girl start kind of flirting and it's basically the journey of those two kids throughout their lives. And the boy's mom has, has a multitude of mental illnesses. She winds up actually shooting the girl's dad who's a cop. Things get out of hand, they're really not supposed to see each other, but then it kind of continues on their journey as um, a couple. And it's really a, a fantastic contemporary novel, definitely one of my favorites this year. It's it's really touching and I really want to read Mary Beth Keane's other books now because I really enjoy her writing, but I also just kind of miss that story. Like I really miss Ask Again Yes and I really want to read it again. <laughs> so next is The Tenant by Catherine Inberg. Again, I'm very Irish. I thought this was great at the beginning and then it just got really bad. <laughs> this is Three Stars. It's her debut novel. She really had one of the strongest openings I've ever read in a book. It was fantastic. The way she describes certain things, it's like she put in a lot of effort in the beginning and then just kind of let it pitter out after that. I keep using that word pitter. It was such a strong opening, essentially about Tennant, who is found brutally murdered. And the issue is, is how she was killed and leading up to it was written in a blog by the landlord. So the landlord looks guilty because it's like she knew this was going to happen essentially, but there's no way that the landlord could have done it. But there's just some dialogue in here that really irritated me that I don't like. Like some, one of the cops would be like, what is this, a crime novel or a thriller novel? And it's like, oh, that's... <laughs> I don't like that. Or like, it feels like we're in a movie. It's I, I hate shit like that. And the next one also was three stars. This is The Wife Between Us by Greer Hendricks and Sarah Pekkanen. This also had a great start. And then suddenly I flipped the page and it just veered. Well. I mean, just it took a turn that I was not ready for. It was a really strong start, though. And then it just got so confusing for me. I literally just kind of brisked through the end. I was like, I don't know what just happened. This is the first Greer, well, I keep mixing up their names, Greer Hendricks and Sarah Pekkanen book. I will talk about another one later though. Next is actually a mistake. <laughs> this is The Poison Garden by AJ Banner. This one was two stars. I picked this up thinking it was a different Poison Garden book, but it was small, so I just read it. Again, really strong opening about a woman who like has a herb garden and everything and very forgettable people die. Two stars. It wasn't very good. I did not like it. Oh no, I'm so far away from it. So this was the next book that I read in February, which is The Other Misses by Mary Kubica. I think it's Kubica. Kubica. This is my first Kubica book, and I gave it five stars. This was so good. I think Books and Lala or Kayla definitely described it best, though. There are some tropes in here that could be harmful. Ultimately, I have not done enough research to see if that is the case, because it does have to do with a certain disorder that is... Try not to spoil it. I thought this was great. I, of course, don't have this disorder. I don't know how harmful it could be, but ultimately I really love the twists in this. It really was satisfying to me. It made sense. I just, I thoroughly enjoyed this book and I definitely think it might end up on my top 10. It, I highly recommend it just to see if it's your thing, but I also want to try out her other books because this was great. I really enjoyed this. And the other one's up there, the red one. It's I'll Never Tell by Catherine McKenzie, I believe. Yeah, Catherine McKenzie. I gave this one three stars. I am not, it's similar to The Family Upstairs by Lisa Jewell as far as like an inheritance goes. It's almost like Knives Out if you've seen that movie, but not as good. <laughs> I'll Never Tell is about a family of like six siblings and it's a lot to keep up with that essentially meet at the camp where they grew up where something tragic happened, somebody died under one of their, the siblings care and they they have to figure out who gets the inheritance because the parents that died suspect one of the kids and they're like okay either include this person or not like it's either going to go to all of you or none of you essentially it was fine not very not very much my thing the next was 
Do I still have it? I do, and it's on the floor. I don't feel like getting it. Was Sadie by Courtney Summers. Yeah, I gave this one four stars. I did the audiobook, also fantastic, about a podcast that is following. Th I had the same issue with this this one in the Sundown Motel, and I'll explain. But it's about a podcast group that is looking into a disappearance and of two people, basically trying to figure out what happened to this one girl and then the girl who went after her. Um, Sadie, I believe it's her sister that goes missing and she has to kind of figure out what happened and she is it's told in two separate parts so where it's sadie's perspective and then the podcaster's perspective and it just seems like a lot of catching up between characters which ultimately didn't work for me like the audiobook was great though it's a full cast um but it was it just seemed like a lot of catching up when it could have been way more suspenseful i was pretty shocked that this is technically a ya book it had some definitely some strong elements to it not i mean We've kind of talked about YA too, uh, Emily and I, from this by the bookshelf, which seems like a really great area of, like, writing. <laughs> and then last but not least for February, I read My Lovely Wife by Samantha Downing, which was so disappointing. I really was expecting to love this more than I did. I gave it three stars, though, because I really loved the concept. And I loved the ending, the very last page. I loved it. I thought it was great, but I was just ultimately, like... <sighs> It's fine. It's fine. I didn't love it as much as I wanted to. Kind of saw it coming too, which was disappointing, but it just didn't go to the places that I wanted it to, which is weird because it went to a lot of places. Essentially, it's about a husband and wife who are serial killers. I am excited to read Samantha Downing's other book, though. I do want to get it, get that whenever it comes out later this year. Um, I think it was called something like You Started It. I'm really excited to get into that whenever it comes out because I do like her writing. I just didn't like this book. Okay, so that's it for February, and in March I read 15 books. So, starting off, I don't have a copy of this right now because I let my friend borrow it, but I'm also doing another video about this, um, Conversations with Friends by Sally Rooney. I read Normal People last year, really didn't like it, so I decided to give her another shot, and I read Conversations with Friends, and it's a five star. It's one of my favorite books, probably on my top ten this year. It's fantastic. I love it. These two girls who are best friends who used to be in a relationship at one point, but they've continued to remain best friends, and they are spoken poetry artists I guess like one of them kind of does the writing and then they perform it together and they befriend this kind of rich married couple and the husband starts sleeping with one of the girls and then the other girl kind of starts hanging out more with the wife it's not really specified exactly what they do but it's a very interesting story about like friendship and love and quite honestly conversations with friends like it's got some pretentious dialogue in it of like these really artsy new york people who actually i don't even think they're in new york but also this one had a great ending i loved it i i really can't wait to see what else sally rooney does normal people just didn't do it for me but this one did i loved conversations with friends and i just let my friend peter borrow that and the immortalist by chloe benjamin which is my favorite book of all time as of right now i read that in december so the next one actually was very satisfying to read it's called the body in question by jill cement i believe it's cement essentially it's a better take on the holdout <laughs> about jurors who ultimately decide that someone is not guilty and then two of the jurors start sleeping together and it creates a problem the main act the main person though is a younger female and her husband is much older and it's it kind of takes a toll on his health and it's also in two separate sections and halfway through we kind of sum up the book already and then the other half is just kind of like trailing onto what happens within the rest of their lives it was much better than the holdout for me as far as a story about jurors oh my gosh okay i'm ready to talk about it i'm ready to talk about it so this right now is my favorite book of the year. I'll go ahead and say it. I'll go ahead and say it. You're going to see this again. I promise. This book shocked me. I literally walked into Barnes and Noble just to go browse and I saw this in the thrillers and I didn't see too much about it. So I just kind of opened it, read the first couple lines of what it was about and I was like, okay, I'll try it. This book Oh my god. The Body Double by Emily Beta. I think that's how you say her last name. She, this is her debut novel, I'm pretty sure. This is one of the craziest stories that I've ever read. I read this er, earlier in March and I haven't stopped thinking about it. It's so weird. It's so weird, but it's my perfect kind of psychological thriller weird. It's it's so good. Okay, I want to be very vague, vague about what this is about. Also on Goodreads, it only has like however many reviews. Not a lot. Not a lot of people have read this. 
essentially it's about a girl who works at a movie theater and she is approached by her boss and says someone is here to see you and they go up to his office and it's this guy from hollywood who says i want to hire you to replace an actress apparently this woman she is an actress pretty famous they look strikingly similar and apparently roseanne has become so depressed that she doesn't want to leave and they need they want to hire someone to literally replace her and it's so shocking so twisted i want to reread it it's just it's oh, i love it and i i you know tagged the artist in my post and i i said and i wasn't trying to be like insulting but i said this just feels like a really weird a24 art film but in writing and she agreed the emily actually responded she was very kind enough to check out my page and respond to it but on my instagram you i don't know who to recommend this to it's just bizarre but it's so good and it just made me so uncomfortable that i loved it i loved it so next another five star was be not far from me by mindy mcginnis this is my first mindy mcginnis book oh my god this was a roller coaster. I don't have it with me. I let my friend borrow it. It's a very short book. I think you should get it. It's a YA, shockingly. It's very similar to Hatchet, apparently. I have not read Hatchet. But a group of friends are camping. They get drunk. Two of them are dating. They all kind of pass out. The boyfriend's ex-girlfriend is also there hanging out with them. And our main character, she is woken up in the middle of the night. She has to pee. And then she hears people talking politics, doing the deed. And so she goes and sees that it is her boyfriend and his ex hooking up again. So they see her, she punches him in the face, breaks his nose, and then it's dark outside and she just takes off running, falls, busts her foot open, and then she's like stuck in the middle of God knows where in the mountains for like way longer than she should be. It's so good probably also going to be on my top 10. Wow, this book was great. I feel like my posture has just slowly gotten worse. Next was Be Not Far From Me by Lisa Jewell. This also along with my Sally Rooney video, which I'll be posting soon, where I give Arthur's, Arthur's author a second chance. If you liked The Family Upstairs, you will like Then She Was Gone. Therefore, <laughs> I did not like Then She Was Gone. I gave it two stars. It was weird i was it's not the kind of weird that i like it was it just kind of sat with me wrong it didn't make me feel great just mm, so, uh, how do i even explain that book also books and lala said in one of her videos that she read basically the insert of it like what it's about and it basically just said everything so i didn't read it and i just read it not knowing what it was about still weird so if you plan on reading it i guess i suggest not reading that little insert on what it's about because apparently it is very spoilery this one i was so sad i didn't like it because i love the way it started i gave this one two stars this is the memory police by yoko ogawa i'm very very wrong about that um this is essentially about a unknown island off of an unknown continent yeah an unknown unnamed island off of an unnamed coast basically there's a force of police like people who are making things disappear and if you remember things you are basically eliminated and it started off really creepy it started off as you know like a five star read i really liked it and then it just kind of took a turn basically this girl is a author and she is worried that books essentially or writing is going to disappear as well and her publisher or editor her editor is remembering things so she has to hide him but the, that part of the book just kind of like appears out of nowhere and it just gets it was weird i kind of want to give it another shot but it was just two stars it was fun so the next one is weather by jenny ophill i did not like this one either two stars it was weird i wasn't for me pretty much it about the end of the world it sounds a lot more fascinating than it was essentially about a librarian or she works at a library on a college campus and the end of the world is happening it's about it it was weird i kind of also want to give it a second chance because i didn't like it as much as i thought i would moving on so i picked this up because uh reese's book club was talking about it this is the jet setters by amanda air 
Ward. Yeah, Amanda Air Ward, which is interesting. This is a fascinating book. I wound up only giving it three stars, I think. Yeah, I gave it three stars because I really didn't like the way it ended. But the beginning of this is essentially a older woman who wins a jet setter's cruise and she takes her four grown-up children with her. And they all have, like, their little secrets. One of them is closeted. One of them is, like, a starving actress. One of them is very unhappy in her marriage. One of them is... Or is there only three? I really did like it, though. I thought it was fun. It just kind of, again, teetered out, pittered out, pittered out. It was good, though. I really did enjoy it. I wanted to keep it with me because it is it is a very fun read. Wait, one, two, three. Oh, okay. So, then, yeah, it's only three. It's only three kids and the mom. You could see them on the cover. <laughs> this one was really upsetting to me because I was very excited to read this. Actually, before kind of everything went to shit at Book Soup, which is on Sunset, one of my favorite bookstores here in Hollywood, um, they were doing a signing with Rebecca uh, about her book in five years. I was so excited by the concept of this book. Also, the cover is amazing. <sighs> Essentially, a, a woman is recently engaged to her longtime boyfriend. She is ecstatic. They are so happy together. They are super cute. They live in New York. And then one night she goes to sleep and has a premonition about her five years later engaged to someone else in a different apartment and it it, tr it leads to that point essentially five years later but it skips basically four years at some point in this and just kind of talks about things happening to her friends and nothing i mean it, and how it kind of affects her I'm not saying that like nothing happens to her because it obviously affects her but it was very disappointing i'm very sad i thought this was fine I gave it three stars. I just wish it went places and it didn't. It's a quick read though. It's a pretty small book, but it was just not for me. So the next, again, kind of a disappointing one that I was super hyped about was Eight Perfect Murders by Peter Swanson. I gave this one three stars. It was fine. I just didn't like the direction that it went. It was just fine. It is about a book seller, bookstore owner in Boston who a long time ago when he first started working at this bookstore wrote about the eight perfect murders which are eight murders in stories told over time one of them is by agatha christie so like the abc murders just traditional murder tales about murders that people can't get away with no murders people can get away with essentially though people start copycatting the murders in the list and it was fine. It just was fine. I know a lot of people really did like this, but it, it was just fine for me. I didn't absolutely love it. It wasn't my favorite thing ever. So I'm going to be talking about these books more, but I'm actually, after this, going to be filming a video about Riley Saker. Essentially, in the span of like four days, I did the audiobook and read every Riley Sager book. So all three of them. Um, starting with Lock Every Door, then I went to The Last Time I Lied, and then I read Final Girls. Lock Every Door for me was a four star. I know that's shocking. Some people say that this is the best thing since sliced bread. It's great. I really do agree. It's great. Wasn't my favorite Riley Sager book, though. I... I really like this. It's about a woman who, um, basically is at rock bottom. She's broke. She's essentially an orphan. She doesn't have anybody except for her best friends. Then she crashes on her couch. She sees an ad on Craigslist. You've heard about this everywhere. I'm just repeating them. But she sees an ad on Craigslist that somebody's looking for an apartment sitter. And she goes to see it. It's at the Bartholomew, which is like the most Ritz Carlton, schnazzy, fancy, rich people. Lots of actresses live there apartment building and she's being paid to stay there for three months for twelve thousand dollars and it seems way too good to be true but apparently there's a lot of rules she's not allowed to have guests um the building has a lot of creepy secrets there's a lot of creepy people there's you know just a lot of creepy shit i would recommend this i thought this was very good it wasn't my favorite riley sager though next last time i lied also gave this four stars i am going to be talking more about these books in more detail but for now essentially about a camp goer in her early teens where she meets friends one of them or three of them she's in a <laughs> how do i explain this book it's about a woman who goes to camp her name is emma when she is a preteen 
and her parents just kind of like ship her off to what they call a rich bitch camp I'm pretty sure by the way the audiobook Sorelli Sager's books are great read those read or listen to those listen to those and she befriends these three girls it's kind of like a mean girl setup where it's like these three very popular girls and they actually take her in and she starts to see very very you know uh, good things in them they have form a friendship they perform a sisterhood but the three girls actually go completely missing they just vanish off the place face of the earth so 15 years later she's still having issues where she like sees the girls she's a painter she keeps painting the girls but ultimately paints over them with like images of the camp she's invited to come back as a camp counselor and teach painting and she accepts it because she wants to see if she can find anything out about her missing friends four stars it was good it was really good if you and again i'll go in more in detail about this if you liked books like i'll never tell you would like this you would so and then last but not least is final girls by riley sager in the Riley Sager uh, three books, not trilogy, of course, but the three books of Riley Sager that I read, um, five stars. This was my favorite Riley Sager book. It was so good. It's hard to explain how much I like this book, but this was definitely my favorite one. It's very dark. It's very twisted. The media portrayal of these three very similar cases where there's a group of people and they are all horribly slaughtered, horribly <laughs> murdered, but there's one survivor. Um, and they are referred to as the final girls. So essentially, there are these girls who, oh, sorry, my screen just went blue. Yeah, three very similar cases where there was one sole survivor and each of those sole survivors were girls. None of the cases are connected, but they, I guess that's not a spoiler, but they, in the media, are portrayed as these final girls. Something happens to one of them, the other two try and connect, but one of them's like, you know, not wanting to be a part of that. She's figured out a way to deal with it with Xanax and baking and she's very successful and she, but basically it's just about them embracing that name, but it's, it's so good. It's such a good book. Again, the audiobook was fantastic. People's, this is typically in people's favorite because it is kind of slower, but it's got a good eerie build to it. And I really recommend these books. I did Wilder Girls for the Backlist Book Club, again with Emily from The Spies Bookshelf. We did a video about it if you want to learn uh, more about it and our thoughts. Uh, Wilder Girls, I gave three stars to you. I thought it was fine. Um, you've heard about it. It's, a, it's hard to explain. It's a dystopian book about these girls quarantined on an island because they are infected with something and they have to survive essentially. I thought it was fine. And then last but not least, I actually finished this last night. I read this literally in a day. Darling Rose Gold by Stephanie Robel. I actually gave this one five stars. This was freaky. Similar to how I felt about the body double, but not as crazy as I felt about the body double. This just made me super creeped out and it made me feel weird in a good way. A psychological thriller that made me creeped out in a good way. If you know anything about, I don't, I'm not going to say this word right, Mukazin, Mukazin by proxy, or Mukazin by syn proxy syndrome, essentially, uh, if you know anything about Dee Dee and Gypsy Rose, yeah, Gypsy Rose Blanchard, um, the mom and daughter relationship in real life where the mom was raking in cash, making it seem like her daughter was terminally ill, even though her daughter was fine. Essentially same concept, except for, I guess this is a spoiler, for both stories, the daughter doesn't have the mom killed. <laughs> this was a fascinating tale about a mother-daughter relationship though and the abuse. There is child abuse in this. This is a very rough book. There are trigger warnings across the board. There is domestic just oh this this was a rough read but I really enjoyed it. I was surprised at how much I enjoyed it. I didn't know a whole lot going into it and reading it at first I was like this kind of sounds like Dee Dee and Gypsy Rose Blanchard but People are kind of upset about that. I read on Goodreads after afterwards. People are like, it's a total ripoff. And I'm like, it's, it's, it's not a ripoff. It's just, it's not the only case in the world where that has happened. It's just the most famous one because she had her mom killed <laughs> and she went to jail. But in the um, acknowledgments, she does uh, recognize Dee Dee and Gypsy Rose. So that's something to note. Um, I think she's a writer in the UK. And it's weird because there was a couple different titles to this book. I also really hate the cover of this. People like it, but I really don't like it. That's all the books that I read for March, but on to the books that I DNF this month. Play this out, Titanic music. <laughs> DNF'd The Incendiaries by R.O. Kwan. Weird. Not about it. This is a hot topic. Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I didn't care for it. Didn't like it. 
You Are Not Alone by Career Hendrix and Sarah Pekkanen. Not good. Really not good. Oh, <laughs> and technically I'm going to do another video about this too, but my March book of the month pick, which was The Two Lives of Lydia Bird by Josie Silver, is sitting right there. DNF'd it. Didn't like it. Right now I'm reading The Passengers by John Mars. Definitely not going to finish it by the end of March or today by any means. It's a pretty hefty read, but I am enjoying it. I think it's pretty good. April book of the month pick. I will be doing a reading vlog on that as well whenever it comes in. It's actually already shipped, so it should be here this week. Hopefully that'd be nice if I can get a head start on that. Thank you guys so much for watching. This was lengthy. I do apologize for that. But instead of doing a video a month, I'm just going to do these quarterly. So that's everything I read for January, February, March. If you agree with some of the ratings that I gave, if you disagree, I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. Of course, every uh, video that I had mentioned will be linked in the description. Um, as far as like the Backlist Book Club and other book clubs that I've read stuff for, that will be noted as well. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. If you like what you see, please subscribe and hit the bell so you're notified when I'm uploading next. If you are for some reason into video games, I also have a Let's Play channel if you'd like to be, <laughs> you know, a part of that, or if you're interested in that. It's Patches Plays Games. I will link that down below as well. You can follow me on Twitter, you can follow me on Instagram, you can do all the good stuff. But yeah, I will be uploading some more soon, and see you guys soon, but another video like this will be in June. June. So yeah. Um, please wash your hands. Hope everyone's staying safe in these weird, weird times. I will talk to you guys soon. Bye!